Previously on Dirty Sexy Money. I get that it was an accident, Patrick, but we still have to call the police. If this gets out, the election, that'll be done. Dad wants me to write a heartfelt eulogy for Ellen's memorial. I think it'll clinch the election. Then all I can think about is Carmelita. Who's this prosecutor? They got a mom's case. A real pit bull. This is her. You hooked up with me and then arrested my mom. No one ever find out. What you do to me it scares me a little, yeah. But I like it. We've got him. You really expect him to defend the woman who's accused of murdering his father? I'll take the case. Ladies and gentlemen, the new vice chair of Darling Enterprises, Nick George. Do you think it's because he took the case? Lisa, I didn't know. Someday, Nick, you're gonna have to make a choice between their family and ours. I hope you choose us. And if elected to the Senate, I will fight to protect you all from a similar fiery fate. I will make it my goal that no parent or child, no husband or wife, shall ever have to take that dreaded late night call and... And, uh, and experience the anguish that all of us who love my dear wife Ellen felt three weeks ago. No one. Thank you. Darling speaking here today about stricter fire codes in the wake of that recent tragedy that claimed the life of his wife. Good speech. Thanks, I'm so proud. Patrick, there's nothing wrong with keeping people safe. <laughs> I know that, Nick, but my dad's got me pimping my wife's death for votes as if she really even died in the fire. I mean, you saw me in there, I'm falling apart. Listen, why'd you really ask me down here? Nick, what if I, what if I came clean? Well, how clean, exactly? What if we go to the cops and tell them that Ellen tried to kill me, but died accidentally? And to avoid a scandal, we had Clarky take the body of Devel Hama, and he's the one that torched the place. And what if we tell the truth? Patrick, you could face charges for obstruction of justice and for arson. You think I'd really do time, though? I don't know, it's hard to say. All right, great, let's do it. You set that up. Wait a minute, Patrick, I just took the job defending your mother for allegedly murdering my father. When it comes to darling felonies, I'm booked. I don't care, okay? My dad may think it's a great strategy selling my fake sorrow for votes, but I can't show up at that debate tomorrow night and perpetuate this lie on national television. I mean, this has got to end. All right. Look, I'll see what I can do. Great. Thanks a lot, Nick. Trip, we've got a problem. What to wear? Yeah. What are you up to today, exactly? Oh, you know, same old, same old. Prosecuting your mother for murder. You like the weepies a lot, huh? Yeah. I also like guys who don't touch my stuff. I'm playing in Irving Plaza this weekend. Maybe we can catch one of their shows. Jeremy, please consult your owner's manual. You and me are only you and me within these four walls, okay? We don't go window shopping on Fifth Avenue. We don't go to brunch with your friends. And we do not go out to see the weepies. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go see a man about a murder. Good morning, Nick. We're about to find out if it's a good morning or not, Daisy. Did the prosecution's witness list get here yet? Nope. No sign of it. Then it is. Call Judge Wyeth and let her know that Nola Lyons just violated her first court order. Violated? Give the girl a break. Miss Lyons is here to see you. Thank you, Daisy. Keeping your busted little office doesn't mean you haven't sold out. You know that, right? Just give me the witness list. What, you couldn't have sent a process server? No. It's a little delicate. There's a name on this list that you're not going to be very happy with. Someone you haven't seen in over 30 years. What the hell are you doing, Nola? Your mother's my star witness, Nick. Anything in her testimony will be completely irrelevant. She hasn't communicated to not any true. of us. Not true. Your mother was the last person to speak to your father the day he was murdered. And as you will see on page 17 of the murder book, I've discovered hundreds of wire transfers your mother's received from, guess who? Letitia Darling. Payments Letitia continues to make to this day. Payments for what? You tell me, Nick. You tell moi. I don't 
get it. Why didn't Grandpa name you as his successor, Dad? You said you were his right-hand man. Yeah, well, maybe he's a lefty. So how's Brazil, shrimp? Very hot. Hang on a second. Wait, what the hell? Hey, we're talking! I'll be right back. What is that ball of crap? Chicken empadillo. That's your dinner? Where's your mother? She's busy right now. Is she not there? She's here. She's just resting. She left you by yourself at night? No. Mrs. Volkman checks in. Mrs. Volkman? The wife of a war criminal checks in? What a relief! I can take care of myself, Dad. That's fine, but you shouldn't have to. You know what? That's it. I am coming down there. And you tell that absentee mother of yours when she gets home from a night of grilled beef and samba that her little Brazilian carnival is over. Butchering Chopin like that. What's wrong? What happened? Le Vivier sur Mer. It's a village in France. You must have heard of it. Been sending checks there for years. Oh my God. I don't know what Claire told you. Well, she hasn't told me anything, Letitia. I haven't spoken to my mother in 30 years. Then how did you find out? The witness list. She's been called as a witness in the case against you. You paid to send her away? No, no, it, it wasn't like that. Well, by all means, tell me what it was like, because I'd love to know. I offered her a place to live and a tiny little stipend. So what, you could have my father all to yourself? No! Oh, Nikki. You don't understand. She... she was unhappy. Well, of course she was unhappy, Letitia. You were sleeping with her husband. It started long before that. You know, today they'd call her, I don't know, bipolar. At the very least, she was depressed. And for a young child to be around that... It... <laughs> Let me get this straight. You, you paid my mother off 30 years ago to help me. That's your story. She wanted the money. She wanted to leave. She wanted the money. It was her idea, not mine. I'm sorry, Nick. If you don't believe me, ask her yourself. Hello? Uh, yeah, hello. Is this Claire? Yes, who's calling? It's Nick. Nick George. Your son. Where are you? I'm in New York. I am calling you because you're on the witness list for Letitia Darling's murder trial, and I am defending her. We can't talk her. about this. I just want to ask Don't you if you... Don't call me again. Good news first, or the bad news? About the good. I booked you on a flight to Paris for tonight. In case you don't want to take no for an answer. And what's the bad news? I hate to interrupt your takeover of Darling Enterprises. Brian Darling is here. But I need some legal advice. Thank you, Daisy. Look, I'm not exactly an expert in international child custody law, Brian, but just because Andrea might be partying every night doesn't mean that you can take your son out of the country, or even out of her house without her consent. But you know he'd be better off here in New York with me. You know he would. It doesn't matter. She's got full custody. Yeah, and whose fault is that? Yours for bribing the arbitrator last year, thereby ensuring that Andrea would get full custody. You know, your moral superiority was always pretty sickening. But since you stole the company out from under every other kid in the family, it really doesn't fly. That is not true, Brian. Taxi. You know that. I was just as surprised as you were. Taxi! I'm going to Brazil. Hello? 
tell your benefactor I'll be in touch. All right. Well, don't do anything stupid, all right? Now I wouldn't dream of it, boss. Move. Sorry. I'm astounded. Nick ratted me out. You should thank him, Patty. He did you a favor. This conversation is going to save you a lot of regrets. Come on, how can I have any more regrets than I have right now? I mean, how could I put my kids to sleep at night telling them to pray to their mommy in heaven, knowing that knowing I... Knowing you what? I just want to tell the truth. Oh, yeah. And what about everyone else who was involved in this, um, situation? What about Carmelita? What about her? Uh, she's your mistress, isn't she? Or she was until she disappeared. You don't think this will draw the tabloid's attention to her? So what, Dad? You just want me to keep on lying? Damn it, Patrick, this is not a lie. Your life with Ellen, that was a lie. I know that, Dad. And I want my life with Carmelita when I find her not to be. That's terrific. Now, I want to tell the truth, and that's exactly what I plan to do in the debate on Friday, and let the chips fall as they may. At least then my conscience will be clear. Maybe you don't remember what that feels like, but I still do. How long has your mom lived in France? Well, ever since she split up with my dad and left New York, so uh, 33 years. Well, how come we never visited? Kiki, let your dad finish packing, okay? You know, actually, I tried once after I graduated from high school because I just, I wanted to see her because I was starting to forget her face. And uh, we exchanged some letters, and she asked me to meet her in Paris at Saint-Chapelle, which is this Gothic cathedral. And I went there, sat and waited, and she never showed up. And you never heard from her? Nope. Well, I think she'll be happy to see you. After all, she has to be proud, right? I mean, you're like famous now. Because of the darlings. Get some more socks. What's going on? What's the problem? Nothing. It's just, you know how many times I've tried to get you to reconnect with your mom? I suggested it when we got engaged, and I suggested it again after Kiki was born. So, I'm going now. What's the problem? There's no problem, Nick. It's just one more thing you'll do for the darlings that you won't do for me. Have a safe flight. Ryan, what are you doing here? I came to see my son. You flew 6,000 miles, spur of the moment. Yeah, thought I'd check in with the shrimp, you know, kind of enjoy the nightlife. What are you talking about? Nothing. It's just that I hear there's a lot of things you can do here at night, out of the house. He'll be home from school at four. You can come back then. What are you looking at? And Nick was so coy when Daddy announced that Nick was going to take over the company. He was like, oh, 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 me? Oh, me? Uh, you should have been there. I almost feel like I was. I'm sorry, am I boring you? No. I always enjoy week-long monologues about my girlfriend's ex. It made me mad. That's all. I understand that. What I don't understand is the pleasure you get from dwelling on it continuously at the expense of everything, including us. Karen, Nick has shown you in a number of ways, spoken and unspoken, the kind of low regard he holds for you. Let him go, unless you've become accustomed to the pain he makes you feel, unless it's become some kind of comfort. It's not a comfort. Really? Listen, I'm nobody's punk, you understand that? And I'm not gonna sit here, listen to another conversation about the man who disrespects the woman I love. Karen, it's boring. If you're really not convinced yet that Nick George has no respect for you, go talk to him. Give him one last chance to surprise you, but you know what? I bet he won't. Miss Lyon. Yes, sir. How can I help you? A little heads up. Mm, can't wait. I heard from one of our 
Air Marshal's out at JFK. Nick George went to France. Yes, I'm aware. Any idea why he's yeah, over there? Yeah, I have a pretty good idea. He's talking to my star witness. It's his mother. I can't really stop him. You do have a plan, though. Yeah, I have a plan. My plan is to nail Letitia Darling's ass to the wall for murder, win this case, and after I'm done basking in the glory of my newfound celebrity, take your job. A little heads up. You can't just show up here. If anyone saw you, it could cost me the case and my job. Sue me. I'm incorrigible. What are these? Tickets to the Weepies. I just got them. Jeremy, if you're not out of here in the next 10 seconds, I will never see you again. Anywhere. I don't know how else to say this, but we don't do exteriors. We can't. Okay? 10. Nine. No. Eight. Okay. Seven. Won't happen again. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. What are you doing here? Looking for Nick. Is he around? No, I'm sorry, he's not. Will he be back anytime soon? Because I can I wait. He'd be waiting a long time. He's in France. Oh. Is that for vacation? No, actually. He's visiting his mother who had to move 4,000 miles away to escape your criminally insane family. Wow. Someone's a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Someone is. Okay. Will you give him a message for me? You know what, since you and your family seem to see more of him lately than I do, how about you give him a message for me? Do you want me to warn him that you're feeling a little hormonal? <laughs> <laughs> Cute, but no. I want you to tell him that the next time he decides to represent a murderer or rule a multi-billion dollar empire, I'd appreciate it if he consult with me first. Because believe it or not, those kinds of decisions actually affect my life too, not to mention my marriage. Okay, that's quite a message. And, uh, I guess just tell him when you see him that back in the real world, his wife really misses him. Even though she's not sure who she's missing, because the Nick George she used to know, the Nick she fell in love with, doesn't seem to really, you know, exist anymore, so... Crazy, isn't it? I always thought I'd lose him to you. <laughs> Turns out we're both losing him to Trip. Did you get all that? Yeah. Yeah, I got that. I'm sorry. Me too. I knocked on the door. Why did you come here? Like I told you on the phone, I'm defending Tisha Darling and I need to discuss your testimony. I don't have anything to say. I'm sorry your father's dead. When was the last time you spoke to him? A lifetime ago. You sure about that? What about the Darlings, Letitia? When was the last time you've seen or spoken to her? I haven't been part of their world in decades, any more than I've been part of yours. Letitia Darling's been paying you a stipend for the last 30 years. Stipend? Is that what she calls it? 
It's severance. It's $350,000 a year, not including this house. It's nearly $11 million in total. It sure sounds to me like you're a part of their world. I won't explain myself. I can't, and you'll never be satisfied with my answers. Well, I'm not leaving here until I get some satisfactory or not. Bonjour! Ah, Martin! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nous avons invité ici. Oh, bienvenue. Nick works for the American law firm that distributes my grandfather's trust. Oh, very important job, yes. Please, stay. He was us. I promise you never have better oyster. Actually, Nick was just about to leave. He has a long drive back to Paris. You know, Paris can wait. I'd love to stay. When I was young, I was an oyster cutter. Oyster farmer. But now, <laughs> now, I am broker with many, many boats. I uh, probably sell soon. If we had uh, children, maybe not. But uh, that was not meant for Claire and me. Yeah. I could uh, give to my nephew, but uh, mm, poof, <laughs> he's an idiot. <laughs> you have kids, Nick? Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have a daughter. Oh, uh, yes. Ah. And how old is she? She is 10. Uh, you have a picture? I do. Uh, oh, this is, uh, that's my wife, oh, Lisa. Oh, superb. And there she is, there's uh, Kiki. Yeah. Claire? And your parents? Well, my father passed away recently. Oh, very sorry. Thank you. And your mother? Uh, well, uh, well, she she left when I was a little kid, so I never really got to know her. Mm. So uh, that must have been uh, very difficult for you, yes? I, I, I wouldn't know. It was my life. I lived it. <laughs> I'm going to clear the dishes. No, no, please, please. I do that. Yes. It's better for you to stay, maybe uh, talk business, you know. Money. Ready to talk now? New Yorkers are gathered here tonight at the Civic Auditorium to witness the debate between incumbent Danielle Root and Attorney General Patrick Darling. And now we come to character. Attorney General Darling, your opponent has said, and I quote, Patrick Darling's relationship to the truth is like his relationship to his famous family, insecure. On again, off again probably based purely on financial gain. Now, what do you say to the voters of New York about your character, particularly as related to honesty? Well, Dan, I'm glad you brought that up because there is something about which I'd like to finally set the record straight. As all of you know, my family recently experienced a great tragedy, the death of the mother of my children, my beloved wife of over 10 years, Ellen. Mr. Attorney General. story got out after yes sir a story came out after the fire that Ellen had become a heavy smoker yes it's not true Dan she only smoked when she was upset it was not a habit wanted the people to know. Well, thank you for that helpful clarification. Moving on. Thank you for visiting, Dad. Are you kidding? If I could, I'd be with you every day. I could live here. Yeah, well, when Darling Enterprises moves its corporate headquarters to the Amazon rainforest, maybe I will. 
then Mommy's house is that way. Yeah, I know. This is a shortcut. I'm your father. Have a little faith, okay? This isn't the way home. Oh, you're right. Hey, maybe this nice gentleman will give us a ride no, home. No, Dad. Hello, Samuel. Will you give me and my son a ride to his mother's house? Come on, Shrimp. Get in. I'm not getting here until you tell me where we're going. We're going to New York. You need to be somewhere where you're being taken care of 24-7. Not just in between street dances or vision quests or whatever the hell your mother's doing every night. Dad, Mom works at night. She works. Right over there. That's where she goes every night? Is that why you brought me here? Yeah. Yeah, and what about the checks I sent? She doesn't cash them. She wants to make it on her own. Don't tell her I told you. Your father and I met when I was 20. I was in my sophomore year at UNC, still a kid. And he was Dutch, this handsome... Yankee lawyer and his sapphire suspenders. Part of this darling dynasty. So, what, are you trying to tell me that he took advantage of you? No, 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 I loved your father. I wanted to be his wife. I wanted to be part of his world. But, um, by the time you were born, both Dutch and I realized I couldn't survive in New York society. Couldn't? I didn't belong. So, slowly I began to, uh, disconnect. From myself. From him. From you. So I decided to leave. Why didn't you take me with you? You flourished in my absence. Look at you. The hell are you talking about? The idea that abandoning me was somehow a productive decision is ridiculous. I wasn't able to take care of you. What was I supposed to do? I don't know. I don't know. What were you supposed to do? Maybe you could have just looked at me and seen me and thought it was worth it to try. To make an effort to be a mother. Now, you dragged me into this world. I didn't ask to be born. But the minute that it got hard, you gave up, you took the darling's money, and you ran away. That's what happened. I don't even know what to say to that. Well, you could say you're sorry. I'm sorry. Very good. See, it's all better now. Oh, please, stop. I know that you spoke to my dad the day that he died. So I want to know what was said in that conversation, and I want to know what you're going to say when you testify. And you can tell me starting now. Qu'est-ce qui se passe ici? Huh? What is happening here? Please. Are you all right? We're dying. I think uh, maybe you, you should go. We were just... Please, please, go! Now! Patrick? Where is she? 
did very well tonight. Dad, where's Carmelita? Yeah, she's okay. She's safe. She's new. I was fortunate a friend of a friend in Homeland Security was able to track her down. And, you know, she told me that after your late wife had her driven away after that was done, she made the decision to remain in hiding out of concern for your political future, a concern that you do not seem to have the good sense to share. So you've got her somewhere, and now you're going to keep her from me unless I play along, is that right? Patty. Okay. You win. Where is she? Here. I meant it when I said you did well. You looked presidential, son. Anymore, and that you promised for the rest of your life hating me. I don't hate you. Yes, you do. You should. I feel sorry for you. Every day I didn't have a mother, you didn't have a son. Patricia killed your father, Nikki. That's what I'm going to tell the court. Uh, on the basis of what evidence? She told me she was going to. The day your father's plane went down, I, I got a call from him. Out of the blue. He was an absolute mess. He just found out that Brian was his son and Letitia had been lying to him. He was going to walk away and leave the darlings. And he, uh, he wanted me to know that he was... He was sorry for everything. And then he said he was going to come over and see me and he wanted to have a first start. And what did you say? I didn't know what to say, so I told him that, you know, I still cared for him, but that we couldn't start all over again. Too much time had passed. It was lunacy. And did that upset him? No, he was drunk. He just hung up the phone on me. And then what? I was scared. I didn't want him suddenly showing up here on my doorstep. So I, um... I picked up the phone again, and... Called one person I thought could stop him. Letitia. And you told her that Dutch wanted to leave her for you. Yes. And, and what did Letitia say? What were her exact words, if you can remember them? Don't worry, Claire. I will take care of everything. Trust me. I didn't know what that meant. I mean, I thought for a second that she was going no, to do no, something. I really... no, Letitia didn't kill Dad. If you tell that story in court, you will die in jail for a murder she didn't commit. My silence is not for sale anymore. She didn't do it. Why aren't you proud of me? I am doing this for our family. No, 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 no you're not. You're doing this for yourself. I'm telling you she's innocent. I'm telling you to trust me. Trust me. Trust your own son who's never asked you for a damn thing. Don't testify. Stay here. Take the money and live your life in peace. Please. Do this for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all coming together. I've got Karen so busy chasing her own tail, she'd never suspect a thing. I'd say all this time and effort's gonna pay off very soon. Um, she's here. I gotta go. Hey! Hey! Hi. I wasn't expecting you. I know. What's going on? I did what you said. So, you want to see Nick? Yes, but I saw Lisa instead. So, I'm gonna still have to wait for you to close the book on this guy. No. 
When Daddy named Nick as his successor, I wasn't just upset because I thought I deserved to be president of Darling Enterprise. Even though you do. I do. I was upset because... Because there is a tiny part of me that always thought if Nick ever did take over the company, it would be because... He married me. But, after hearing Lisa and what she had to say, it seems... The Nick that I fell in love with, he's not really there anymore. But you are. I don't want to lose you. Well, you never have to worry about that. As long as you want me, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you finally do let go of the past, mm -hmm. all of it. Mm -hmm. It'll give you the chance to open yourself up to even greater possibilities. Like what? Like marrying me. Okay, what the hell did you do to my witness? What witness? I just got a call from Claire George. She says she's not going to testify now. Well, you should send her a subpoena. Oh, right. She's a French citizen living abroad. You can't. You know what? I should have you arrested for witness tampering. You can't charge me for talking to my mother. You done, counselor? Not even close. Oh, I, I keep waiting for this to die. It never does. Take it away. Patricia? Oh, you know, I spend so much time at home now. I notice these things. Have you come to yell at me again because I won't brook it? No, I came to apologize. You were right about my mother, everything you said about her. I'm sorry, Nick. I take no pleasure in that. I should go. I haven't even been home yet. Nick. I know I'm not your mother, but I tried to be. I never asked you to. I know. But if you could have seen yourself at six, this little boy without a mother wandering around our house, pushing your little briefcase on wheels around, so full of need. I loved you. And I still do, Nikki. Can't you feel that? Can't you? I can't tonight. Bad day? Let's just say it wasn't prime. What happened? I know you can't talk to me about mom's case. Just give me the hard stuff. Big picture. Okay. The most important thing in my life is my work. I don't have a husband. I don't have kids. You have a secret boyfriend? Yes, I have a secret boyfriend. And my work. And when my work doesn't go well, when I don't have that, I don't know what I have left. That's my life. That's the big picture. Isn't sharing fun? Wanna go see the weepies? I told you we cannot go out. Who said anything about going out? No, weepies? Weepies? Nola. Hey. 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 We all sign confidentiality agreements. Mom is the word. You're a criminal.
Did you see your mom? Yeah, I did. Back to sleep.